Namaste, everybody. We'll begin today's session. So, everyone, just straighten out your back. Sit comfortably and make sure that your back is straight. And just gently close your eyes. And start watching your breath. Just observe the natural flow of your breath. And check that your forehead, neck and shoulders are relaxed. And now begin to deepen your breath, taking more time to inhale and more time to exhale. Going at your own natural pace while you do so. And making sure that there is no strain or effort when you prepare your mind the chanting three times, followed by three shanti. Exhale completely and then take a slow, long and deep inhalation for home. Vibrations. And now join both the parts together and drop them together. Place them over your eyes and slowly while blinking and looking at. Um, open up your eyes and Namaste to everyone. Let us begin today's session. Uh, first of all, any doubts from the previous class? We discussed uh, the five rounds and uh, the uh, prerequisites for. Uh, pranayam practice. So, if you have watched the video, any doubts? Okay. So, I'll uh, start with today's topic. So, we are doing pranayam class. 
this is your pranayam class so today we're going to start with a little bit of practice various practices which will prepare you for the main pranayam practices okay so before that uh, there are two main hatha yoga texts pratipika and gherin sahita okay these are the two main hatha texts whenever you are practicing hatha hatha yoga okay then these are the texts that you refer to and these will give you the original techniques of the various practices be it asanas pranayamas mudras anything these are the two books so in when you open up at your pradipika or gherin sahita you will see that eight eight pranayams have been talked of eight pranayams in hatha pradipika and eight pranayams in gherin sahita most of the pranayams are similar for both texts because uh, so hatha pradipika was written first and then as the time passed and uh, certain conditions everything changed with the passing of time then gherin sahita came okay so you will see that in hatha pradipika like asanas less and then as the time changed for more asanas to reach that same level to go ahead and practice pranayama so same way when hatha pradipika was there when it was written there were eight kumbhaks or pranayams that were talked of and as the time changed most of the pranayams that are talked of in hatha pradipika are being talked of in gherin sahita also but gherin sahita went uh, has two different pranayams so it also has eight pranayams just two pranayams are different in both of them okay all the rest of them are same okay so in this course you will be practicing all the pranayamas most of them are covered which are there in the hatha yoga some of them are very advanced practices so those are not a part of your syllabus but apart from that most of the pranayams we will be practicing okay and you will also see that in gherin sahita some other details relating to pranayam have been shared okay both them have their own understanding of pranayam and prerequisites all of these things have been shared in both the texts you will find some information in the other text you will find some more information okay so today our topic of discussion is normal breathing or natural breathing okay so before we start pranayam right now what we have our main focus in the upcoming classes will be to correct our breathing pattern so that we can reach a stage where we can change our breath according to the pranayam practice okay so today natural or normal breath as the name itself suggests that the breath that is going on so breath breathing is a natural process yes but most of the people are not breathing correctly okay so first we will try to correct that so in normal breathing our main focus is going to be one on the process of breathing so we are becoming aware of the process of breathing when we practice normal breathing second thing that we are going to take care of is that we are uh, equalizing our inhalations and exhalations okay we are going to elongate our inhalations and exhalations eventually but for now whatever process is going on we are just going to make sure that our inhalations and exhalations are equal okay and eventually we can also reach to a point where the inhalation is maybe up to 5 seconds but the exhalation is longer so longer exhalation is generally preferred even when you go into pranayam there are different ratios given for the different practices like we discussed in the first class puraka which is inhalation conscious inhalation kumbhak which is retention and rechaka which is con- conscious exhalation 
so all of these things have various various ratios according to the level of practice the time that you have given to that practice so if your exhalation is longer than your inhalation that is all right but if your inhalation is longer than your exhalation then you need to correct that and at least make that equal for a beginner okay so today right now we are going to practice normal breathing uh you can uh, just note down one or two things so you can just write down normal or natural breathing in your notebook yeah and then i'll just be telling you certain things that you need to take care of when you are practicing so after you have written the heading thing that we will do in each and every pranayam is the sitting posture so the posture of the body what should be the position of the body when you practice in that breathing so the position of your body will be a sitting posture in which your entire spine is erect okay do not try to make extra curve with your lower back so sometimes what we do is we give an extra arch in our lower back so we need to avoid that we need to push our abdomen in make sure that spine is completely straight okay when we are practicing any kind of pranayama so any comfortable sitting posture will come under your posture if someone is ill okay so i told you that pranayam practice is not exactly done when you are ill but preparatory practices can be done they in fact help you and give you a lot of help so if somebody is ill they can practice normal breathing they can practice other breathing techniques preparation techniques so they can lie down and practice okay and make sure that their neck is not towards the right side or left side when they lie down just they lie down straight on the mat or straight on the bed okay so this is our position when we are doing normal breathing second thing is the precautions so in precautions there are no precautions for this practice everybody can practice okay then the third thing that you need to take care of is uh, sorry not take care of the third thing is the advantage or benefits now normal breathing is such a natural thing and we are not doing it correctly so when we start breathing correctly there must be some changes that changes and shifts that we experience so while you are practicing try to uh, connect with this also but on a biological level the oxygen that enters your body like now increases okay because generally what happens is it the blood is not oxygenated properly so when i'm connecting with my breath then i will see that the o2 in my body is now like coming more easily and it is present over there and then i'm exhaling that out so there is proper supply of oxygen when i am doing normal breathing then the second thing that happens during normal breathing is that i go into a relaxed state of breathing so my mind also somewhere starts to relax down so right now i i'm not aware of my breathing at all how my breath is going in how my breath is coming out once you start observing naturally your breath will become slow during this process which will lead to a calmer state of mind okay the next point is calmer state of mind okay and it helps me to work on my respiratory system now everything my body will also support the expansion of my lungs when i am breathing and i'm able to when i exhale then my lungs are completely like going in also properly and then expanding also properly so it is very good for the health of the respiratory system okay so now we'll begin with the practice of normal breathing so 
can just keep your pen everything aside and just make sure that you are sitting comfortable if you are able to sit on the ground that would be very good or else you can just sit on the chair and just close your eyes follow my instruction while we practice normal breathing so you can just if you're wearing any specs you can remove them straighten out your back and just start observing your natural breath as it is and begin to withdraw your mind from any thoughts bringing it back to the present and observe your posture check that the weight is being equally balanced on both your hips you're not tilting towards one side you're not not to like leaning forward or you're not leaning back your your spine should be straight here in the center i make sure that your entire body is relaxed if you feel there is tension or stress accumulated in any body part just take your mind over there and stretch those muscles to relax and then gently bring your mind back to the breath and to prepare yourself for the practice of normal or natural breathing after the next exhalation watch your breath as it goes in as you inhale the breath enters your nostrils and then it goes down to the throat and then down and as your lungs expand the breath reaches the final point where the exchange of gases takes place and as you exhale the lungs start going in and the air starts moving out from your throat region back of the mouth and out through your nostrils again as you start to inhale feel the touch of the breath as it goes in and slowly reaching to the final point in the lungs your chest is now completely expanded and as you exhale the chest goes down um and feel the exhalation on the back of your throat and the out of your nostrils stay connected with each and every movement in your body with the breath and go at your own pace making sure that there is no effort in the process of inhalation and in the process of exhalation
if there is any effort in the process of reading. And try to eliminate that. We can make the duration of the inhalation and exhalation short to avoid extra strain. Now let us begin. And I'm being aware of how the breath is going in and how the breath is coming out. Just make sure that you are inhaling and exhaling in deep proportion. If you're taking three seconds to inhale, then take full three seconds to exhale. All the time being connected with the natural process of the body. And ask to slowly and gently become aware of your entire body. And all the sounds that are around you. Start connecting with all the sounds. And now slightly move your fingers and your toes, very slow and gentle movement. And join both the palms together. Grab both the palms together. And placing them over your eyes. Slowly, blinking and looking at the palm. I come back. So, how was your experience? Were you able to equalize your breathing pattern? Were you able to feel your breath? Uh, yeah, sometimes it was difficult because uh, maybe it's like first time. Okay. Maybe it may take some time. Uh, breathing sometimes it was more and exhalation sometimes it was less and uh, uh, end of the lungs it was feeling a bit uneasiness yeah. okay i will address yeah. this yeah how was it how was my experience yeah means my experience was good because um, yeah i am doing regularly uh, meditation and uh, the yoga practice. So somewhere I was connecting with my own body and I was feeling more relaxed actually because it's just almost six and a half hours difference India and here where I am. So it's here is 10 o'clock. So kind of means early morning you get up, you take your classes because I'm taking my online classes. I'm, I'm working as teacher. So I'm taking my online classes and then till four o'clock and then five o'clock again, I'm joining this. So now I'm feeling a little relaxed. Oh, good. So 
I'll address the strain point because that happens a lot. So actually what happens is, it happens because of two reasons. One is when your posture is not correct, then it seems like there is a pressure on your lungs. Yeah, that is being caused. So you're not able to breathe that easily. Okay. The thing is that posture, you can work on your posture to correct this. You can make sure that your spine is straight. And this will also come with time. Like as you practice asanas, as you go into other practices also, you will see that if there is a default in your posture, then that will start getting corrected and you will be able to breathe for a longer period of time and exhale for a longer period of time because there is an improvement in your posture. Okay. Second thing is that if you have had food, before, like at least there should be a gap of three to four hours when you are going for any pranayam practice. Or like I can say that the food that is in the stomach, that doesn't allow you to expand your lungs very much. So that can also be one of the reasons why the breath was not coming in very easily or it was harder to gain control over the breath. Uh, breath. Yeah, so try to work on these two points and with time also so today was our first day of practicing this so with time also you will see that there is an improvement in your normal way of breathing because right now we somewhat strain ourselves to make the breath like uh, to elongate our breath slowly that will also get eliminated and this will become your normal way of breathing in life okay so this was one thing. One thing is that we focus on the normal breathing. Second breathing that we are going to discuss today is the abdominal breathing. Okay. Or we can say when the abdomen comes out as you inhale and the abdomen goes in as you exhale. Okay. So this is going to be the technique when we are practicing this breathing. So for this breathing, if you want to sit up, you can practice this breathing while lying down or sitting. And you will see that when you lie down on your mat, uh, then you are able to experience the same breathing much more, okay? But in case you're not able to lie down, maybe you're just sitting on your mat, then you can place your right hand on your abdomen, okay? And when you inhale, belly should come out. It should expand, okay? Right now my phone is not on my chest, uh, chest region, rib cage. The movement of my rib cage is not relevant for me when I am doing abdominal breathing. Okay. So, when as I inhale, my abdomen will completely come out to the maximum I can say capacity. And as I exhale, my abdomen will go in. I will completely contract my abdomen so that I am able to create space for the next inhalation. So both these movements will create uh, space for the next movement that is coming. So if I inhale, yes, then if my belly is completely like out to the maximum capacity, then when I exhale, I have ample amount of air to expel out. Okay. So my, it's very important that I uh, my belly expands to the maximum capacity. When I exhale, if my if I am not pulling my abdomen in properly, okay, so then what will happen is the space for my next inhalation will not be created. Okay, so make sure that when you're practicing abdominal breathing, then the space for both the things is created by proper movement of your abdomen. So. First, first of all, just grab your notebook once again. So let's just write down when you are practicing, like the topic is abdominal breathing. And the posture for this is any comfortable sitting posture. Yeah, with your right hand on your abdomen. If you start feeling the breathing with time, then you can remove your hand from the abdomen and just do normally, do the breath normally. But for a beginner, just make sure that they place their hand on their abdomen while they're sitting. 
even while laying down they can keep their hand on their abdomen okay we are going to do this breathing while lying down okay if you don't have if you're still sitting then you can do this in second watch so that is not an issue for a sick person the person can just lie down and practice this breathing it's in fact very good if you are uh, not able to like go to sleep or if you're dealing with any illness this breathing would highly uh, is highly recommended for any person be it any illness this will help you to relax and calm yourself down yes and overall it will improve your uh, system uh, functioning of the system uh, in the uh, position now the precaution for this is there is no precaution everybody can practice abdominal breathing okay and the benefits for abdominal breathing are once again mostly similar to normal breathing only this helps you to train your respiratory system yes and it corrects your breathing pattern now because my main emphasis is on my abdomen when i am doing this the movement of my abdomen so all the organs in the abdominal region are getting some stimulation while i practice abdominal breathing so that is another benefit of abdominal breathing that the stomach liver all of these like it is very good for the functioning of all the organs in the abdominal region and it is also very helpful in treating any form of disease as we discussed okay so now i uh, now everybody just place your uh, everything aside and if you have a place you can just lie down if you're lying down just make sure that your legs are slightly apart yeah and one of your arms away from your body like in shavasan yeah palms facing upward your spine should be straight so don't tilt your neck to the right or left side and you can place your right hand on your abdomen even while lying down or if you feel that you are aware right now you are very much connected to your body you can just relax your hand like your left hand placing it on the uh, ground palms facing upwards if you are in any sitting position just make sure your spine is straight and place your right hand on your abdomen okay and just close your eyes relax yourself first we'll start connecting with our breath the normal breath and just start checking that your inhalation and exhalation is equal give your breath some time to go into a deep state where it is very relaxed naturally very relaxed don't put any effort and make sure that each inhalation and each exhalation is equal and it does not enter or exit your body without your awareness and go into a deeper state of mind
and mentally prepare yourself for the practice of abdominal breathing. After your next inhalation, exhale out all the breath from your body and push your abdomen in and then start inhaling. As you inhale, your abdomen begins to rise up. And then once it reaches its maximum point, then simply start exhaling out all of the breath. And contract your abdomen. Then start inhaling. And exhaling. Going at your own pace. Take a few deep breaths over here. Saying that your breathing pattern is correct. And be aware of each inhalation and each exhalation. Making sure that there is no effort while you're going in this breathing. and remaining very alert and very aware. If your mind has the tendency to wander away, slowly bring it back to the movement of your body along with breath. Keep a very close check and make sure that there is no effort that you are putting in while you are breathing in this manner. Take a few more breaths. Staying fully connected to your body and breath.
And now suspend the practice and come back to your natural breath. And now slowly move your fingers and your toes. Become aware of your posture. Start coming back. Start connecting with all the sounds around you. Join both your feet together and turn towards your left side, making a cushion with your left hand and placing the right hand on the floor and observe your breath. One or two deep breaths over here. And then with the help of your right hand, just lift up your body and come in a seated position. And now rub both your palms together. And place them over your eyes. And then slowly while blinking and looking at the palm, open up your eyes. So were well, all of you able to feel your the movement of your abdomen with the breathing? Yes, yes. I was able to do this. Great. Were you also able to take Okay, so problems that you faced in this. Um, sometimes when you said like uh, some thoughts, uh, if they are coming, that time there was no awareness of breathing, like uh, unconscious breathing was happening at that time. So when you said come back to your... Um, for come get your focus on your breathing, then I was able to do that. But when thoughts were coming, it was unconscious breathing. So when we are going working towards building awareness for pranayam, this is exactly what you have to do. The involuntary action of the body, which is the process that is the breathing, it's involuntary. So now what we are doing is in pranayam, we take voluntary control over the breathing. So from an unconscious activity which goes on during the day, now it is turning to a conscious activity. So, and the mind also has the tendency to run away. Okay, so it's very clever. It will, as soon as it realizes that you're trying to control it, you're trying to control at least something that might help you to control it, then it will have a tendency to run away or you might go into sleep, okay? So when we lie down and do abdominal breathing, sometimes we also tend to sleep. So these are all ways in which the mind will try to stop you from being aware of the breath. So you have to consciously come back to your breath each and every time, okay? So you have to make a conscious effort to come back 
to the breathing or the movement of the body part okay so tomorrow when we will do chest breathing then the movement of the chest will be your main point of focus right now the main point of focus was the move in and out movement of the abdomen okay so constantly bring your mind back to your practice stay aware during all the practices that you are doing not only pranayam even in other practice try practices try to stay as aware as possible so you will be able to gain more benefit out of the same practice okay so you can work on this in this manner any doubt uh, how frequent to use this uh, abdominal breathing abdominal breathing you can do at any point of time and uh, there is no like ill effect that you will face in fact if you uh, are doing abdominal breathing you will see that your natural uh, naturally during the day your abdomen will move in and out while you are breathing if you like uh, practice this properly the natural tone of your breath during the day will change it is very good it will always give you like keep you in a calm state of mind if you are in a calm state so there is no upper limit to practice in um is there is any restrictions regarding after food or before food do we need to uh, go for pranayam or meditation yes so this we discussed in the previous class also for all like for pranayam i will tell you first so for pranayam make sure that there is a gap of at least 3 to 4 hours okay and even in these practices now you can do abdominal breathing after eating but you will see that it is not as effective as it was before because your stomach is not empty so what yes. is happening when we are doing abdominal breathing so it's uh, it's not uh, that breath is uh, coming in my abdomen when i'm doing abdominal breathing what actually happens is the diaphragm moves and abdomen is pushed out okay so it's very easy for us to observe the in and out movement of the abdomen if i tell you that okay now we are doing abdominal breathing to oxygenate the lower part of the chest so that won't be like you won't be able to observe that so that is why we go for uh, in and out movement of abdomen so if when you eat you will see because there is something in the stomach it's not able to exactly move very freely so try the conscious effort that you put in right now you're putting in conscious effort for doing this exercise so don't do that consciously after eating okay after a while your subconscious okay. pattern of breathing will change to abdominal breathing okay? that is okay okay that thing is okay but consciously okay. sitting and practicing try to avoid because it place a lot of pressure on your lungs and even your abdomen over okay 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 yeah it is thank you a, a very good practice uh, it's a very good practice uh, for uh, somebody who is unable to sleep especially so just while you're going to sleep and even you guys can start practicing it so today because we practice normal breathing and abdominal breathing so today before going for uh, to bed yeah just yeah. lie down and practice abdominal breathing for mm-hmm. 15 minutes and listen okay. until you don't that will come naturally to you you will fall asleep on your own mm-hmm. but till the time you are awake your conscious practice abdominal breathing and when you wake okay. up also try to practice abdominal breathing for 10 to 15 minutes okay 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 so okay. any other doubts yeah i think it's clear especially yeah. the breathing part is clear yes yes <laughs> okay. so we will continue with these practices tomorrow also and then we'll see how we are able to build up Okay. 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 Uh, do you have any videos regarding this uh, on your YouTube channel? Which I, I found uh, means few of them are there, few of them are not there. I I was checking for even uh, your last class also, so I didn't find any means video related to your last class. Okay. So I will 
okay so probably they were not uploaded i will just check with the it team when they okay, will be okay. uploaded and i'll let you know okay so uh, but uh, are we going to get any notification uh, from your side about about any any video new videos upload any uh, okay so yeah uh, i'll post it on the group if i get some information you guys are the group the yes. yeah yeah i, I yes. joined whatsapp group yeah see the my so worry is just... only uh, means the time difference because um, hmm. i may be able to join i not be able to join but yes uh, means if i will finish i will take till last class that means i'm here is near about 132 o'clock in the night okay, okay. Oh. Yeah. so that's why no worries. if you have any uh, they are yeah. but uh, i guess self paced course is available you can check with that also but okay. i also okay. yeah even i didn't get the credentials of self paced course okay so but these the, are your live this is live batch self paced course is also there okay but better to be live because if you have any uh, queries you can definitely you can ask questions and you can take solution for that so yeah somewhere we have to sacrifice <laughs> yes yeah. so uh, you will get you will get login credentials so you uh, uh, pre recorded videos for all these concepts So yes. Okay. Keep watching so, them. Along so, uh, class started uh, like course started on July second, right? Yeah, these live classes are started from second July. Pre-recorded okay. classes are available to you okay, all so the time. Two, okay, so two uh, two days class we need to watch before coming uh, like tomorrow's class. Yes, that would be ideal. Okay. Okay. Yeah. so uh, you have pre recorded videos also you will get your login credentials so those videos will remain with you for your lifetime so if you get okay. any doubt those videos also you can come in the live sessions and ask us depending on which subject it is from you join that live class and clear those doubts in the live classes so it's not necessary that you just joining the live classes for the concepts only if you have any doubts you can still join the live classes and clear those okay okay, okay. the only only thing is that means i really didn't find any means um, second july onwards any videos on that uh, youtube channel i'll check with the it team and i will update on the group okay okay thank okay. you so much thank you so let's end the session Okay. Back in next trait. Just gently close your eyes. We'll chant Om one time, followed by three chantings. Inhale deeply for Om. Shanti, 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 Shanti. So I'm going to come together and drop them together. Place them over your eyes. And slowly, while blinking, open up your eyes. Come back to life. And Namaste, everybody. I will see all of you tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye.